Step into the ring. Choose your fighter. Club.
step into the ring. Your bones, there's nothing inside. Will it always me? Burn it down the walls. Is that a way for me to break? I'm a chef shifter, apples masquerade. I didn't both face of mine. I prefer for you to draw. I'm a chef shifter, have no face to show. Please don't take off my mask, my disguise. Welcome to Post University Purple uh, versus uh, Farmingdale State University Rams. Uh, my name is Frisco, and yeah, let's have a good time tonight. Now, both teams tonight are five and one. It means both qualify for playoffs. So really, I know you could get you could, you could kind of win for like a better seating, you know, depending on how you win. But this generally is just going to be for, I guess, technically fun. You know, you do compete for a better seating. Um, you know, the more wins you get, the more likely you are to get a better seed against a certain teams. Um, but, you know, this is really just for fun at this point. Everybody's, everybody here is qualifying for playoffs. So we're all chill, you know. Oh, I don't know if we're starting yet or not. I don't know what's going on. I assume right now that we're going to be getting bands going uh, as per usual. So now tonight uh, is the last week... I believe, for ECAC. Now, with ECAC matches, uh, this is going to be our stage list for the, nice, for the night, as always. Going into these matches, as you know, as always as well, uh, you only have a pick of starters. So, uh, I believe home team gets to ban two stages, uh, then away team gets to ban one, and then home team gets to pick what stage we um, end up going to. Uh, now, so, the, when it comes to the bands, it's going to be Battlefield, Finalist Nation, Town and City, Pokemon Stadium 2, and Smashville. That's where we're going to be starting off at. So, we're going to end up on one of those stages. Uh, with knowing post... Oh. 
I just realized I have a three minute delay on. It's fine. It's whatever. It'll be fine. I'll just, for any of you out in chat right now, um, I will be a little bit delayed on if you if uh, anybody has any questions. I'll respond a little late. But knowing Smat, knowing Post University's teams and their characters, um, probably want to keep Smashville a little bit more open. I feel like a lot of Post's kind of characters kind of benefit from that. Generally from a smaller stage, but jeez. Honestly, considering especially Kenny, Kenny can kind of work on whatever stage he wants. Um, he tends to really like Final Destination, even though his character you would think wouldn't really benefit a ton from it. Um, but everybody has their own kind of play styles that they need to adapt to. So, things work out from there. I might have to restart the stream, depending on what Denny tells me um, about the delay. There's a lot of people in this arena, jeez. You know what? I am going to restart the stream super quickly, just to make sure that we're all, all on time. So, I'm going to go to my settings. Uh, you know what? Nah, actually, I'll just leave it now. I don't know if there's going to be a skip or anything. I just turned off the stream delay, but I don't think I... I'm not going to restart. So it looks like we're going to get a start from BK tonight. Now, BK is, you know... Uh, a, a pretty strong Dark Samus player. He has been showing a lot of, you know, promise in these, in these kind of previous matches. Kind of really playing the tried and true Dark Samus kind of play style, and, well, general Samus play style of like really doing effective anti airings and whatnot. Um, very effective at doing that. And with Peach being kind of like a Floatio character, though she does have a lot of potential on the ground. Um, it's probably a relatively even matchup, Peach and Dark Samus, just because Peach has a lot of ground potential. Um, she can kind of stall herself in the air if she wants to. Gives Dark Samus quite a bit of needing to commit in certain regards. But we'll see. Kind of do. Uh, right now, Peach is going for like a grounded approach. Gonna anti air with the Zare, though. I didn't know Dare could interact uh, and kind of phase out Missile. That's actually really interesting to know. And both players are kind of keeping their distance right now, but BK is doing a really good job trying to kind of snuffing out these aerial approaches coming out of uh, Kev's, uh, you know, Peach right now. So this is Kevo's D45 uh, coming for Farmingdale right now. BK out of BK out of 20%. There is about a 60% differential in, in percent right now that is just not answered for when it comes to Farmingdale. I really like that shield pressure coming back on stage with Bomb and back at the same time, really making that shield look like a Skittle. <laughs> wow. The, the F-Smash is going to cancel out that Bomb and Dare, and I think the jump is burned. You gotta be super careful when recovering. Nice high recovery coming out from BK right now. Really good anti-air with the up-air. And I, I actually really like these bombs, kind of forcing Pe Peach to kind of go even higher. Um, if Peach lands in those bombs, it's going to kind of detract from a lot of her approach options. And that is going to be the first stock off on Farmingdale right now. And again, this is a this is a 9 versus 9 crew battle. Well, 3 versus 3 players, but 9 to 9 stocks. 
BK at 96%. Really needs to make a lot of worth out of this worth, worth come out of the stock right now. Really needs to keep his distance. We don't have Stitch Face online yet for Peach. I really like this stall, though Peach can enter out uh, on the ledge to contest uh, Dark Samus off stage. So he has to be very careful when on that recovery. Dash Tag is going to send him upwards. It's not the not the most effective kill move ever. I really like these stalls coming up from, from BK right now. Back throw is going to be kind of weak. He's trying to read the low recovery, which I actually appreciate, but Peach is at a percent where she can kind of afford to recover high once in a while. I like the idea of that F smash coming out from Kev, uh, but it was a little too late on the charge. But the F, but the fair is going to take the stock. BK really needs to kind of bide his time a little bit more, though there is about a 60% difference still. So BK is really keeping this lead to himself right now, uh, really detracting Peach from like, making any sort of approach. Because here's the thing, Peach does have turn up, she can play at a distance. Uh, but a lot of her strength is going to come from these direct combos off of, like, turn up and whatnot. Oh, reading the roll, but not able to kind of punish it. Oh, BK's kind of putting himself in a corner a bit for a bit, but it's going to work out for him. That grab, that read on shield is going to work out, and that grab is going to connect. Going to connect. Um, I think predicting a roll or expecting the, sh the get up attack from ledge to be a bit more on shield, but the up B is not going to connect. Though Fair is gonna be close to killing. Peach at 149, looking very toasty, and BK only at 27%. Uh, and um, Peach did use did use the double jump. That could have been a situation where there could have been a dare uh, for Peach's, against Peach's recovery, would have been able to spike. But if you're not confident in it, you are better off just kind of ledge trapping in that situation. Peach at 154 anyway, It's go she's gonna lose the stock relatively soon. BK at 40% off stage. Oh, trying to go for the grab, but that shield pressure was really crazy where the grab couldn't even come out. That landed Nair is such a safe move. I really like that roll. BK got up from ledge and tried to do an outer shield option twice, didn't work out. So instead, opting for the roll and doing an offensive option from there. Really like the stuff coming out of BK right now. Uh, putting Kev on their last stock, BK at 75%. This stock is pretty toasty for Samus right now. Uh, Gotta make sure that you that you do not give Peach the chance to set up a combo that sets you into kill percent. Back throw? No, going for the combos uh, for down throw fair. Gonna stuff out that landing with dash attack. BK 97% off ledge. Reading the roll in. BK has been rolling off of ledge a little too often, and Kev is able to read it. Though still a 60% differential. Um, this is still looking to be BK's game off the start. Uh, though we are getting some of the Peach combos down throw. These cancels are so clean coming out of Kev right now. Reading the roll again. BK is rolling a little too much still. Um, I would go for a jump. Go jump. 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 Still rolling from ledge a little bit. The mid wasn't able to punish it that time because of the timing. Back throw. Yep. We're trying to read these low recoveries when Pete, when uh, Kev has not recovered low this match yet. A lot of his recoveries are coming high. F throw off stage. I like that jump to avoid turn up off stage. Don't roll. Very good. BK is adapting. Very good not to roll there. Because Kev is still trying to read the rolls. Oh, back air. Oh, is gonna be, this is going to be a tough situation. Oh, okay. Don't roll. Very good roll. Very good. Being a bit more, you still rolled, but you were a bit more patient on the roll. I will accept it. I'll accept it from BK. You're adapting. Back throw. That dash attack is safe? That's crazy. I didn't know that the dash attack was that safe on the late hit. Oh, Fair is going to take it. Putting Farmingdale up one stock over post. Jeez, that was such a turnaround. The shield pressure coming out of Peach and coming out of Kev for that match was pretty insane. Uh, so many safe options that I didn't know Peach could actually get away with, uh, especially coming out of Samus's grab. Though, uh, tether grabs are do take a bit more time to come out, so maybe a different kind of character was able to punish it, would be able to punish it. Um, I, I'm actually surprised that grab couldn't come out after that. On the late hit of a dash attack? That's kind of crazy. But that puts Post down to six stocks and FSU down to seven, putting FSU in a one stock lead. This is kind of crazy, actually. Like, that was a big turnaround. Because the entire match, BK had that 60% lead. 
and was able to hold on to it. Really did a good job at anti-airing, but the second Peach started playing more grounded and really catching on to BK's roles. The, that was the primary thing that happened there. BK, it was two things. One, BK really is comfortable rolling from ledge. So he'll either do a ledge roll, so he'll be hanging on the ledge and do a roll, or he'll neutral get up to stall the roll and roll from there. And Kev was very familiar uh, with that habit. I would have liked to have seen uh, BK jump from ledge a little bit more to avoid that situation. But the other thing that occurred that really kind of turned the tide was the fact that these like late hit dash attacks were really safe on shield and BK wasn't able to bring the grab out in order to punish it. Really good awareness coming out of Kev. Uh, really understanding how BK tended to play and the certain options that he wanted to choose and able to punish them right out the gate. Um, that was a really impressive turnaround. Though BK did, was able to adapt a few ways, but it was a little too late. The percentage lead was already gone, and, um, you know, it was close by the end. Both players had were at kill percent, but Peach was able to put Samus at a higher percent. And Peach does have a really good um, kind of survivability off the ledge, because Peach can kind of float out as much as she really... Well, not as much as she wants, but for a long time. And BK was really banking on Peach, on Kev, to like make these low recoveries, uh, kind of doing runoff uh, Zare, or runoff Neutral B, or runoff Fair, things like that sort, that would interact with the low recovery. But Kev opted for high recoveries almost every time. There were a few key situations where they did, where uh, Kev did up B to ledge, but it didn't really show. So little things to keep a note for the next round over. But right now, we do have Kenny going up against Peach. And so, Kenny's very familiar with item play. Peach has turnips. Uh, both of these characters are actually very familiar with item play. So it might be interesting. We might see some grenade play between the two of them. Um, we're probably not going to see Snake utilize turnip that much. I feel like we're more than likely to see Peach kind of throw back uh, some grenades towards Kenny's way. But we are going to uh, Small Battlefield, which is a very good stage uh, for Kenny. And I actually really like this choice for Kenny versus Peach because Peach is going to recover high in some areas and Kenny is able to kind of leave C4s on platforms, kind of leave grenades um, to prevent some of these kind of fall from her. And really, starting off with a really aggressive C4, um, and the name of this game is going to be keep stay away from Peach. Uh, the up air was a little coming out a little too late, was able to shield that. The shield pressure from this Peach is so insane. The DI out uh, is not going to allow Kenny to kind of connect that dash attack. You really, in this matchup, you really need to keep your back on Peach. Because Peach doesn't have many disjoints, except for like F Smash, which is not like a totally reliable move. You really want to see if you can get Peach to connect um, on the back end of Snake with a Fair or Bear, something to interact with Grenade. Um, Kenny's at ledge, and this is kind of the position that Snake does not want to be in. He wants to be on stage control, kind of popping grenades whenever he can. I like the high recovery, then switching to low. Back throw. Going for Nikita to try and cover the high recovery. I really like it! Though the side B is going to connect on that. Oh my god. If you, again, Nikita, if you hit Nikita, it's hurt box. It's hurt, well, hit box rather, goes away. Because, you know, Nikita's part hit box and hurt box. Um, sometimes it's the best thing to do against Nikita is to interact with it. Oh, Kenny's not able to land though. This is going to be a pretty tough recovery, especially with Snake's back. Covering the any sort of attempt at an approach with, by like, detonating the C4. I like the option, though I would have recovered jump a little bit more. Down throw? No, back throw. Gonna send Kenny right back off stage. Kenny is facing the wrong way right now for ledge. Neutral air. Dash attack is going to kill... Snake is heavy, too. That's kind of surprising it killed a little bit. Uh, Snake is a big boy. Though it is at 151, that's gonna kill a lot of things. And here come the Peach combos. 59%. Really quick on Snake. Ooh. Really interesting recovery. I like that drift. 72%. I like that air dodge in coming out of Kenny, but that shield is, gonna, is a skill right now. You do, know what, you do not want to find yourself in shield any longer. Late hit a back air. It's going to send Peach up. 129. Kenny is r being really anxious for this kill right now. He's not really popping grenades anymore. Kenny needs to be playing more off of grenade because Kenny is the character that is more prone to live longer. He can't be desperate for these kill moves right now. He's really trying to approach Peach, and Peach is not the character you want to try and outbox terribly often. You want to get her in a mistake, kind of confirm off grenades and whatnot. 
he's he's trying so hard, but he can't. He can't allow himself to kind of get in these situations. Sure, Snake has really great boxing tools, but you do not want to be at the end of a Peach combo or a Peach confirm. I'm gonna pop that C4, so you try not to land on it. Because here's the thing, Kenny needs to remember that as the only thing that, you know, Peach has like random things that she can kill with, like Stitch Face or Babam, but generally Peach needs to commit on Snake Shield. So those are the kind of things that Kenny needs to take advantage of. He wants to kind of keep staying away and force Peach in. That shield is so small. Kenny's got to be so careful. Don't get, don't get desperate, Kenny. Just take it slow. And I like Nikita. Though, that is going to get punished. That's another thing about Peach. She can kind of switch her high to a low recovery. And the roll read is coming into play. Putting, oh wow, putting Kenny down to his last stock. Down throw, up tilt, yep. And that is going to be the tried and true. Again, when you're at 159, when your opponent's at 159, you can always down throw, up tilt. And that's going to put Post down to four stocks and FSU down to six. So there's going to be a two stock lead for FSU right now. Let's see what Kenny can do. Now, as a character like Snake, you get a lot of worth off your stocks. You can live for a long time. And I think Kenny could do a better job of bringing that more into play. Because Kenny got really impatient. He just wanted to seed all of that stock really quick, really hard. And that's not how you want to play Snake too hard. Because Snake is, of course, a zoner. He's a very unorthodox zoner, but he's still a zoner with really great boxing tools. So sometimes Snake can approach, but against a character like Peach, who has incredible boxing tools and very great mobility and stalling tools, you don't want to try and mix up Peach in close quarters combat. You need to stall it out, make her make a mistake on grenade and confirm from it, or set up C4 in a way where, you know, she falls into it. Against a character like Peach, um, you need to have her make mistakes. She hits your shield wrong, she pops into a grenade, pops into a C4, you Nikita her off stage, something like that. Um, trying to approach with up tilt is not going to be the best move. You want her to kind of hit your shield in an unsafe fashion, then grab her, down throw. Uh, and we weren't really seeing that until the very end there, when Kenny started slowing down a little bit more. He started catching on a little bit. Um, he started playing it a little bit slower, but, he, but it was kind of a little too late because now he found himself at the end of ledge, um, at high percents, and then Peach was kind of just throwing out bear, 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 trying to hope that he was going to roll in. And then, you know, Kenny started getting uncomfortable. He started rolling in, and then we see those punishes with up smash at ledge. It's very tough um, if you're not willing to, like, wait out Peach in those situations. Sometimes you're better off just jumping the platform and waiting on platform and holding it out for your time to, like, kind of slip by her. Sure, platform is generally not a place you want to be. You don't want to be above characters most of the time in this game. But sometimes, if it's like, if you're stuck... You don't want to buffer a buffer roll. You sometimes need to like move an inch closer, walk up a little bit, m get into shield because Peach doesn't have a ton of kill throws. She has like down throw, I think can pop up the top. Um, but uh, you're generally safer in shield than you are trying to, you know, kind of run in and do an attack of some sort or doing a roll and get punished for it. You want it, you need to take your time, uh, especially with a character that is, you know, really good at shield pressure heavy um sometimes against peach you just need to think about resetting neutral you're at disadvantage you know peach is like wailing on your shield and she's not giving up sometimes it's better off go back off stage so you're like sure you don't want to be in disadvantage but go back off stage give yourself a little bit of breathing room reset as much as you can if you're on stage even better reset the neutral back off a little bit but you just don't want to like buffer an option and then get punished for it you just don't want to be put in that situation that's what peach is kind of looking for because Peach has, does have a lot of kill moves. Um, so if you do something unsafe on her shield, or you do an option that you can buffer, you know, up smash, F smash, uh, fair, bear, side B, all of these options can do can kill. So you gotta be so careful. Luigi. Oh. So I imagine this one must be a little bit tough for Snake because uh, Luigi can kind of zone with, uh, with Fireball. It's a very good kind of zoning tool for like kind of slower characters like Snake would be. Uh, Louis Snake doesn't like getting grabbed. Luigi has one of the best grab potentials in the game where he can get a zero to death off of you, of course. I really hope Kenny's been practicing his SDIs. And this is not a stage you want to bring Luigi to. I was going to say Snake needs to rely on platforms to get kind of beat, go against Luigi. Ooh. You cannot be in shield. Kenny needs to be moving the entire time against a character like Luigi. 
because Luigi, if you're on the same plane as Luigi, there's just an even better chance for him to kind of grab you. So you need to really get, get cook these grenades and keep Luigi at distance. I like these jabs. I like... So oh, that grab is so long. SDI, SDI. He's not SDI. That's quick 52%. Now, that could have been a zero to death. If I, but the Legion kind of made a little bit of a mistake there. Because when you go up against a character like Luigi, you need to SDI out of those combos. These kind of like consecutive hits, need, can, you can fall out of them by misfire. Wow. Anticlimactic ending. Misfire Luigi is going to take it, putting Post down to their last three stocks in FSU at a full three stocks lead. That was a very unfortunate stage choice against especially a character like Luigi. Luigi loves flat surfaces because generally, you know, you if you are a character that can work well with platforms, Luigi has a tougher time because he needs to start either committing to try and get up there and kind of hit you with fair or land on platform and use grab or, you know, continue to use, you know, fireball. And it's not great for Luigi. He really, Luigi really benefits from getting up close to you, kind of grabbing you, forcing you in shield. Um, so platforms are a little better against Luigi than not having them. Though he can still have his kind of continued strings off of, like, dual plats and whatnot and tri plats. Um, but when you're on FD, ooh, that is prime Luigi real estate. Luigi can, in some ways, be kind of compared to, like, these FGC characters who, like, really like being on the singular plane of existence that can kind of touch up death you. Um... Except without, you know, the auto turnaround and the canceling of certain attacks on shield and whatnot. And now we got Bowser. We got great on Bowser going up against Luigi. Now, Bowser is going to be really easy combo food for Luigi. But Bowser, I feel like, can also um, punish certain things on Luigi. Um, you just kind of need to play distance a little bit. Try not to stay in shield. I do not agree with this choice going back to FD. Um... I, nice grab. Uh, it's a fair. No, it's up air. Very good choice. Up tilt. Reading these things. I, that was actually a really good grab. I'm surprised it missed. And here comes very good SDI coming out of uh, of great. Very good. That's how you kind of need to fall out of Luigi combos to kind of miss that like little bit of like extra 10%. You want to try and get Luigi like uh, you don't. You want to make sure these combos don't work the best. Way. Up B out of shield is going to take the stock on great though. Very strong plays coming up of this Luigi right now. Nice back throw. This is where Luigi tends to be the weakest. Fire breath end up threw the fire breath out a little too early. Ooh, reading the roll, but not able to get the punish off. Down uh, back throw? <laughs> no. Not back throw that time. Oh, trying to read the roll on up smash, but a mm, little a little greedy with it. Uh Luigi at 119. Great at 6%. The air dodge though. You're not gonna come back from that. Putting FSU down to five stocks. No, great is that last several. I like these jumps coming out of great. I guess a character like Luigi, you need to be jumping a lot and air dodging, like just like Great's doing. He just he does not want to be on the ground for a character. I guess a character like this, parrying the hit of the wow of the plunger. That's Zare. Oh, up tilts. Bowser's gonna be in these up tilts because again, Bowser is combo food. Oh, oh, very good stalling the, the uh, upbeat. Oh, but. Return in kind. Luigi's going to send out his up B, and that move kills super early. Uh, are we going to see the... Yep, we're going to see the combos. This might be it. I love the SDI, though, coming out of great. Able to follow these combos, even though it's such a heavy character. And that is going to kill at 100%. Putting... Uh, right now, great's out their last stock, but so is... So is Sir L. Sir L down to their last stock. That Oh, falling out of the fair. Oh, this is not a position you want to be against Luigi at the ledge, holding in shield. Oh, I like, I actually do like the, the attempt at the shield. Oh, they're just not able to kind of follow up on, like, these options, though. So, Bear, going to contest that landing. Fire Breath, going to put Luigi right back off stage. Bear just missing the mark. Jab, not able to connect. Luigi being, doing a lot of safe shield pressure with, like, down tilt and back air. Very good stuff coming out of, out of Sorel. Roll out, roll out. Very good roll out. Back air. Bowser at 111. Ooh, not quite enough to kill. Oh my god. And that's it. Yep, that's it. And that puts FSU up 1-0 over post. That was so unfortunate. I'm actually so surprised that that actually connected, that side beat. Um, it was a super late hit, but still, there isn't a weak hit 
on Luigi's side B, I don't think, so that's going to give the full brunt of it, even if it is on the last possible few frames. So this is a little bit of trouble because Post doesn't know the last character for FSU going into this. Now, a few things that they could change. Do not bring Luigi. Do not, do not, do not, do not bring Luigi to FD. I don't care if you're Bowser, or your Bowser can kind of have some benefit to it. Have some platforms against Luigi, because Luigi, if the the less you are grabbed, the better against Luigi. Um, platforms kind of give you that breathing room to kind of avoid where you're going to land, because Luigi is really good at punishing landings with things like dash attack, um, with grab, uh, you know, da well, not so much down tilt. Um, it's primarily going to be dash attack and grab, uh, zoning you out on your landing with, you know, neutral B, things like that. Or catching your landing with up smash for a kill. That is definitely something he can do as well. So again, going into this next round, we, we are in ECAC. Um, if I was post... Oh, jeez. Uh, again, I would probably try to aim for Smashville if I can't, if I could. Uh, I do feel like the post guys do tend to do better on stages like Smashville. Um, usually they do really good on Final Destination, but do not bring... If you have a Luigi in, in that lineup on the other team, do not go to FD. I would not. Um, especially considering they have characters like Peach as well. Um, you probably want to stay off of FD for the most part because Peach really enjoys, you know, these kind of like horizontal strings on the ground. Don't go to FD. I really hope we don't see FD again uh, coming out of post. At least a dual plat. Uh, tr avoid Town and City. Avoid FD. Um, bring them to, you know, Smashville. Pokemon Stadium 2. Battlefield. Battlefield would be primo. It would be the best option you could have against a character like Luigi, I feel like. Um, being able to take your time on the top platform be really nice but you know you're not going to be the one banning everything so i assume battlefield is going to be off the table for some of the matchups And it looks like we have, we have death coming up for Farmingdale right now. Death Gamer. So for Farmingdale, we have Death Gamer, Sir L, K3, and Kevos. Um, looks like we have Kevos, Sir L, and Death Gamer. Rob. Uh, I don't know if the post guys have a ton of experience versus a character like Rob. Um, super combo heavy. Uh, really good boxing tools and a zoner. Rob kind of has everything in this game. The only kind of weakness Rob generally has is, you know, uh, he's a big body. He can get comboed. But that's really it. Um, I feel like Bowser might struggle a little bit in this matchup trying to, to get in on certain things, such as like gyro, laser. Um, <laughs> Rob's in there. Those words are so huge. But let's see what great is going right for the aggressive option off the start, which you kind of should against a character like Rob and when you're Bowser. A really nice grab going to up throw into the fair, but that fair is going to get snuffed out in kind with uh, your own fair. Oh, I think he touched the platform. He has a jump. Not even going for the risk of that. Going straight for the up B. Nice get up attack. Up tilt is going to snuff out that landing right there. Oh, going for the up air. I really like that up air attempt. Oh, jeez. Nair is going to be a little too shallow to kind of contest it like that. La these landed bears can get punished. I would Against Rob, I would probably do less landed bear. And if you're going to do bear, do it rising. Falling out of the jab right on the back hit. Ooh. Ooh bear's going to get punished. Ooh, going to footstool. Grab. No, not quite sneaky enough to get that grab. Bear's going to snuff out that jump. Uh, right now, Great is kind of panicking a little bit. Um, he's kind of a little scared of... Well, those fairs are not connected. Down throw into up tilt. No, right into the up smash. And that is going to take it. Down throw to... Down throw on Rob is a really strange throw. Because he can do, like, up tilt. Contesting with Bear, that's going to kill sub 100%. Uh, very good stuff coming out of Great. Making it even up. Though, there is going to be a 40% stock difference. That down smash is going to catch that landing coming out of Great Cup. 
Great's just finding these positions at off of ledge where he's... No, that won't kill. That is going to kill. Oh, my God. Robo Lariat is so strong. Able to sneak in these kills so early. But right now, Great's kind of finding these situations when he's off stage and not able to recover. You have to... I would have... I would probably would have tried to contest a little earlier off stage, but it's kind of tough with Bowser. I, you know what? I, I yeah, it's a little tough with Bowser. He probably had the he, great probably had the better idea. Air dodging the ledge. That fair on shield is gonna get punished. Ooh, really nice down air, kind of mixing it up. Back throw. Yep. Oh, laser. Oh, up smash into spot dodge. Uh, I thought he was going to get punished for that, for sure. Up tilt, not quite strong enough to take it. Oh, no. Back throw into laser. Yep. D-I-N. That is going to take it. 100%. And that's going to put Post down to six stocks and FSU down to eight. So, already a two-stock lead for FSU. Against Rob, it's like, jeez. Because Rob generally has, like, a lot of good things in this game. He can, his mobility can be a little cumbersome. He's not the fastest on the ground, so you can kind of take advantage of that with certain matchups. Um, maybe bring in Snake for this, because Rob's grab is pretty good, but it's not like the best thing in the, in the game. Uh, I feel like Snake would be a good character choice against this. Or even Samus. Dark Samus actually wouldn't be that bad of a choice either. But you always have to contend with Gyro on the ground when you're Samus. And so if, if Gyro is on the ground, you either need to be jumping and doing neutral B a little bit more. Or you need to be doing Missile uh, to kind of cover those options. Whereas with Snake, I think, you, you know, you kind of force Rob to kind of interact with you a little bit more. Because sure, he has laser, but laser isn't the... There's a timer to laser. The more Rob lets laser sit... In his, on the back foot, the stronger it becomes. So Rob tends to be incentivized to not fire laser at a massive amount. Um, and Snake probably does a pretty good job of shielding it. You know, if you do that, you kind of force Rob to come in and kind of contest with you. I would probably bring in Snake. That's just me, though. And I'd probably bring Rob to a dual plat. Uh, yeah, a dual plat. I feel don't bring him to a to a triplat. I wouldn't do triplat. Uh, definitely something with smaller sides. Don't bring him to town and city. Um, again, here's the stage list. I would probably bring Rob to <clears throat> small battlefield. Probably bring wrong to, Rob to FD. Small battlefield battle. Mm, not battlefield. Final destination. Small battlefield. Um. Or PS2. Something like that. That's where I would probably want to bring Rob. And we are going to get the... We are going to see BK come in with Dark Samus. Um, let's just see how much BK had... How much experience he actually has in this matchup. Um, again, you need to just be constantly aware of Gyro and where that is. And, but I do think you can contest Rob decently. Though, he can land with Nair. And Nair is pretty massive. Uh, let's see if Samus' fair can contact with Rob's landed there. And we are going to get that one stock suicide coming out from Def Gamer. I like Rob's upbeat, it's so funny. And we got the taunts and we're good to go. Going for the quick charge. Gyro, this, you do not want to between, be between Rob and Gyro. Oh no, such an early kill down air. And that's the thing. You do not want to bring Rob to stages where he kind of has that platform up top because one, he can get super early kills off of it, uh, off the side, and two, he can also dare right from the platform and drop through. And since Samus has such a vertical recovery, it's a lot harder for you to kind of, like, be in those situations. And here we go. They're going to go for Rob Lariat and jump burned. You don't think you can recover from that. Yep. Oh, no, you can. Wow. I'm actually super surprised uh, BK was able to return back from that. I, oh, I would have liked to have seen a grab there. Opting for the bomb retreat, I understand, but it, this is at a point where BK seems a little bit afraid because he already lost an early stock. Um, oh, the, yeah, grab is a little too... That grab was a little too greedy. Reading the roll, BK is getting punished for rolls once again. No up, no up tilt. I'm surprised there's nothing off for that. 
I like the neutral getup. Very patient stuff coming out of EK right now. Though dash tech on shield is gonna get punished. Really good, really good mash, but reading the air dodge landing on the ground, that's gonna get punished by back air on Rob. Really great stuff coming out of Def Gamer right now. Running the full gambit on post. Zare to contest. I do like these Zares. I would like to see if some a few more Zares uh, to contest an aerial approach coming out of BK. Oh, Zare's not going to connect right there. Up air. Bomb is going to prevent Rob from doing any sort of up air on Samus's return to stage. Really good DI out. That was super important DI out. Uh, up, gonna follow that up, being not able to kill with that. I like the stall with Bomb off stage. Uh, but a recovery's a little too low, and that is going to put Post down to their last three stocks on this round. And FSU didn't lose any of that game, so this is gonna be a five stock difference. Now, I do think Snake does decently well against Rob. I think uh, he does not have a bad matchup at all against this character. Um... Might be closer to even, but I do think it's probably a little bit snake favor. Um, and we have seen Kenny do some really great comebacks off of a bunch of different characters in, you know, in these kind of lineups. So we are going to see what happens. This is, this is you know, it's looking bad for Post, but this is not out of the realm of possibility for especially a player like Kenny. Now, again, if you're snake... Try and get to small battlefield. Try and get to Pokemon Stadium too. Um, or, I actually don't think Snake has a terrible matchup on FD against Rob. I wouldn't do it though. I still wouldn't do it because of Gyro and Laser. You want to be like moving on platforms, kind of forcing Rob to do his thing to get closer and closer to you. I would probably, you know, really try, really try to go for the Pokemon Stadium to a small battlefield, things like that. Um, Smashville, you take a risk. Um, I don't think Smashville is a good stage to bring Rob because Rob can kind of kill pretty early off the sides on these smaller stages. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't bring Rob there. I wouldn't bring Rob to Hollow Bastion. Um, especially uh, because Rob's up air, up air can kind of kill. Depending, It can kill pretty early if you DI it wrong, and it's a really easy move to DI wrong because of how you fall in and out of it. It's a really messed up move. Um, but if there's like a middle platform that he can kind of shark the entire time, then it's a lot easier for Rob. So don't bring him to a single plat in the middle of the stage. Bring him to a dual plat. Bring him to... I wouldn't agree, I wouldn't agree but, you know, FD... Eh, FD is like a half and half. Don't bring him to Kalos, especially if you're Snake, where you have to recover low uh, a good chunk of the time. You can recover high in, in those situations, but Rob also has, like, higher platforms on Kalos to kind of interact with you on your approach. So, um... I would be more comfortable if you bring him to, to regular Battlefield than you are uh, with, like, Kalos or something like that. Bring him to Small Battlefield. Again, Small Battlefield, Pokemon Stadium 2, or regular Battlefield. Those are going to be your biggest options against a character like Rob, uh, if you're Snake. If you do bring him to Battlefield, though, just be careful because of that still, that middle platform, he can just kind of shark. Um, but it's a lot harder for him to shark that middle platform if it's that high up. So it's something to keep in mind. You just got to be careful. Here comes Kenny. Let's see if he can kind of turn this around for post right now. We're getting a little bit of more. very good stage choice. Very good stage choice. Bring the Pokemon same too. There goes Rob flying away. And we're gonna get the taunts. Immediately going for the offensive option. See, and here's the thing: keep your back to Rob. Force him to kind of approach with these nares. Get a grenade out. And you should be getting a bit more to work with. Though, Rob, again, Rob has really good zoning tools. So, you know, Snake does too. But you got to be careful. Because Rob can outbox you just like you can other characters as Snake. Mm, rolling in on right there is going to give you a little bit of a tough time. 
Oh, grenade gonna connect into the up smash, putting Rob at 50%, though there is still 40% deficit on post right now. Kenny really needs to take his time. Oh, really like the stall with the grenade there. The shield pressure is up, but Rob can't really kind of deal with the fact that grenade is there. Uh, he can try and grab Snake, and that's something he can definitely do, but he has to time it right. F-Tilt gonna be really strong against a character like Rob. Now, here's another thing. I, I always mention this to Kenny, but Kenny can down tilt heavy characters like Rob at higher percents, like 120, and get, kind of do F-Tilt off stage, and that's true confirmed. Uh, but Kenny is going to divide first, putting Kenny down to his last two stocks. Rob at 102, he might be able to start doing, like, down throw F-Tilt if he starts grabbing Rob right now. Go for grabs. I like the F, I actually like the dash tag off stage. Oh, I'm gonna air dodge right through that. Mm, I shouldn't have grabbed. Very nice spot dodge into up tilt, though. Really good stuff coming out of Kenny. Down tilt. Not gonna be able to do that. Uh, down throw into up tilt. Really good stuff. Oh, the exact same sequence? <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, Kenny's staying, you know, dropping a shield a little too soon against Rob. We hit a dash attack is gonna pop Rob up above Snake. Oh, gonna punish that air dodge. And then the up air. That's the, that up air is really hard to DI, but Kenny did it right that time. He DI'd out, thinking he could get the spot dodge out of it. Uh, sorry, you know, fly it out to the left. And he did well. But Kenny at 133, he's gonna... Oh, he's gonna... Yeah, a little too late there. The high recovery was a little too soon coming out of Snake. We're putting Kenny down to his last stock, already at 18%. I really like hitting him with that. He air dodging through Nikita. Wow, that's crazy. Really good timing coming out of uh, Death Gamer right now. The shield pressure. You needed to drop shield there. Nikita not quite strong enough to kill. I really like pop of the grenade. Uh, roll out, roll out, roll out. And roll in. This is a roll in. I actually like that roll in too a little better. That was a little bit better of a choice coming out of Kenny. Kenny going for the parries, but... This stock needs to be taken now. Uh, and... Ooh, that's the problem. That's what I was talking about before. You can easily DI Rob's up air completely wrong. Notice how there wasn't a final spark there. Kenny DI'd in when he should have DI'd out. And that cost him the stock. And that puts Post down 2-0 against FSU. Giving the game to FSU. Very unfortunate. Uh... Really good stuff coming out of Def Gamer right now. And because here's the thing Rob's up air is a really crazy move. It's just kind of like a little, you know, you're going to fall into it at like a random point. And, you know, you got to kind of guess a little bit. So if you are, you know, if you're not sure of where you landed in the move, it can be very hard to deal with. You have to guess should I go left? Should I go right? It's going to be a lot tougher to kind of deal with. Now, in either case, Post still, you know, uh, qualifies for playoffs, and so does FSU at five, uh, Post at five to two, uh, and FSU at six to one. So, either way, they're, you know, they're going to both be in the, be in the playoffs. Uh, so this, again, this was more so just for like slightly better seeding, um, generally for fun though. So, no loss here for Post, they are still going to qualify for playoffs. Uh, post purple Very good stuff coming out of FSU this week now I've been Frisco fragrant. Thank you all for joining me tonight. It's been a pleasure as always uh, Good stuff to FSU good stuff to post uh, even though you know it was a little it was a little tough there by the end uh, Didn't really work out in posts favor, but you know you take some you win some you lose some and that's how you kind of take it You just learn from what your losses and bring it to the next match I've been Frisco. Thank you all for joining me tonight for Post University Smash Purple versus Farmingdale uh, State University. We will see you guys next time. Bye.